Okay, seriously, The Weekenders is one of the greatest Disney shows of all time. Why is it so underrated? And for my $5 patron shoutouts for the month of February, Average Stranger, Brian Shepard, Charles Dooley, Hunter Burst, Isaac Herrera, John Paul Meyer, Jubes, Jose Hernandez, Kimberly Calderon, Brian Wallier, Sam Welch, Samuel, Sotas, Tack, and Zenith. Thank you all for your ad support. All of you are super, just saying. Yo, do to that, your friendly neighborhood Jack Splate is back with another episode of Would That Work Out? The series where I use my knowledge of personal training and exercise science to analyze how effective a fictional character's routine, or for this episode today, diet, and how well they would work if you attempted them in real life. And for today's episode, we are covering Mamoru Takamura of Hajime no Ippo, the badass himself, and his insane diet plan that he used to get ready to fight Brian Hawk, one of the scummiest boxers in the series. And honestly, Hajime no Ippo is just a great show that led up to one of the great greatest fights of all time and god I love this fight so much. Now I know y'all are probably wondering if I'm going to be focusing on the training aspect of this episode more than the diet aspect but I just want to let that be known that uh, no I'm not I'm going to be talking about some of it but I'm going to be talking primarily about the diet plan that Takamura followed when getting ready for this fight. Though I did an entire video uh, a couple years ago talking about would Ippo's training work in real life and I talked about all the training they do at the Kamigawa boxing gym and uh, pretty much will go hand in hand with today's video. I explain everything in depth and just like analyze everything fully there so definitely be sure to check that out and for those of you who actually want to attempt the training because I know some people always comment because they don't know the difference between would that work out and tough like the tunes uh, if you want to try out like an EPO style training video be sure to check out my tough like the tunes for EPO like I did a tough like the tunes back in 2016 for it really great help you get a nice strong athletic body and you know just think you feel like a boxer too or you could always just join a boxing gym but either way they work great at getting you nice and in shape so I'll I'll leave links to both those in the card thing whenever it goes by. I'm confused whenever that thing goes by, but uh, yeah, that's what we're going to be focused on today is Takamura's diet. Anyways, Takamura realized he had to make weight for this fight and he would have to drop 20 kilos from his 90 kilo frame in a ridiculously short amount of time. For my American friends, he had to lose 44 pounds from his 198 pound frame and for my British viewers, that's a starting weight of about 14 stone minus about 3 stone. So it was a drastic drop that he had to make and he began his own training like hell. So for the training, Takamura followed the standard boxing protocol of heavy bag work, punching focus mitts, shadow boxing, and tons of road work, which I explained in depth in my EPO video of how beneficial these all are at helping you become a better boxer and helping to shred you up. Now for those of you unfamiliar with combat sports, I'll explain why weight cutting is common and why fighters do it. You see, in sports fighting these days, there are various weight classes and divisions which go from Flyweight, meaning you're around like 106 pounds, to bantamweight, to featherweight, to lightweight, to light welterweight, to welterweight, to middleweight, to light heavyweight, to heavyweight. And then this one is usually the top, but then there was one level above. Then if you some Baki the Grappler motherfucker, this super heavyweight, so we're literal giants battle. The reason they have these weight classes is because while it would be awesome to have this Dragon Ball-esque world martial arts tournament like the old K1 fighting days, it can put a substantial handicap on the smaller fighter when following the rules. Not saying some of them couldn't come out on top like some Rocky IV Creed II scenarios. Why are they even in the same weight class? But when fighting someone just as skilled and conditioned as you are, who is bigger, stronger, and has more power, and you're limited to the sports rules, then you might as well be fighting Goro's big ass. I mean, just imagine prime pretty boy Floyd Mayweather boxing prime scary knock a motherfucker out in 10 seconds Mike Tyson. Both outstanding athletes in their own right, but one of them has a clear edge. Now, I'm not saying this for all the time. Some people can be better fighters and hell, Ali rope a dope foreman in their iconic match, but they were both heavyweights. But it really does depend on your skill level. Yeah, I remember when I used to do boxing and MMA classes and yet you had to spar because like if you don't know how to spar, then you don't know if these, you know, techniques you're learning actually work if they were like put to use in real life and there was this big dude in our class named Gerard this like big six foot corn fed motherfucker he was just like jacked and me and him were just playing around like sparring. it wasn't anything like serious or anything like that because I get my ass handed to me but like um he we were just like going at it just like tapping each other and then he got way too into it and he just did like this 
cap right here to my stomach. I felt the fucking wind leave my body. And it was just like, oh my God, the power difference. I mean, when you get hit by someone who is big, strong, and powerful, actually knows how to throw the punch, they're not just some bodybuilder who's like thinks, oh, I'm swole, I can just beat up anyone or something like that. Someone who actually knows how to like Mike Tyson that shit. You feel the difference. It's like when Krillin got booted by Cell and he was like, oh God, yeah, that guy is strong as fuck. Like you can just tell like, oh, this is the reserve of what they got packing. And that makes a ton of sense why they have like these different like weight classes when you experience it firsthand all right it's just something i cannot describe to y'all you'll just have to feel it there's a reason boxing has so many weight classes safety because all it takes is a few pounds difference of muscle and power to really really hurt someone and that very reason is why certain fighters cut as extreme as they do now i'm playing with power now i want to say this there are tons of great videos on youtube talking about this very thing some from various pro fighters themselves, and I highly suggest checking them out if you are a fighter trying to find a tutorial of how to do it properly. But first, and I do mean this first because it is dangerous, make sure you have a coach and nutritionist person with you to help you do this properly. Because if you try to do it on your own, that can be very, very dangerous. I mean, right now, I'm just going to discuss Takamura's way, and if you want like a tutorial, that's what I suggest, finding a coach and nutritionist to help you personally because everybody is different and reacts differently because this is, and I'm not, I'm being very, very serious right now, very dangerous to do by yourself if you don't know how to go about it. And I'm just gonna talk about Takamura's way and how effective it would be when comparing it to real life athletes who go through something similar to get ready for their fights. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're around the same skill level and same conditioning as your opponent, but you are bigger, stronger, and more powerful, that can give you a competitive edge because we don't think about this too often, but being strong is a skill. Like you, you train your muscles to get stronger either through resistance training, however you want to do it, and then you, like you lift these heavy weights or you like do calisthenics you make your muscles just grow to be stronger and more muscular and if your muscles you actually know how to use them they ain't just for a show where you just you know walk around like that bodybuilder who versus the arm wrestler and got like destroyed if you actually know how to use your muscles that can be a massive competitive edge in the boxing ring or MMA ring whatever you choose to do if you actually like know how to use your muscles they're all about functionality so typically what some fighters will do is they will cut so much weight to make weight at the weight then before the fight, they refeed and rehydrate like a jacked up sponge so they can battle at their max potential. Yeah, I hope you got some glue for me because I am wet! Now, Brian Hawk was a junior middleweight world champion from America and also one of the scummiest antagonists from Hajime no Ippo. For Takamura, whose natural weight is around that of about a heavyweight fighter, this fight was not only a chance to capitalize at another belt, but to shut down this disrespectful, ugly ass mother- I really hated Hawk. Anyways, he began his hellish process to lose as much weight as fast as possible, and it was rough to watch. So we've seen Takamura diet for fights before, where he would only really eat a tomato or two, and he can't even take a piss from the lack of moisture in his body. Though that's a nice little reference to Ashton and Joe for people who know what that series is, one of the goats of the, like freaking boxing anime. But because he's a bigger guy, it takes him longer to lose weight when he's like required to, so he has to do a bunch of this extra like ridiculous stuff to make sure he makes weight on time. For this fight, he was already depleted as he had messed up his weight management for the fight prior to this. And then as Hawk disrespected him, he felt the need to kick up his weight loss to a higher level so he could make it on time. He started off consuming just fruits and soup his sister made him, but as the scale refused to go down, he began to sacrifice even those. He goes to such extremes for his weight loss that the other fighters mention how what they typically go through is nothing compared to what he is going through. And everything they bring up from cravings to your senses being sharpened legitimately happens in real life. Like, legit. I'm not lying to you. If you've ever wanted to have real life Wolverine smelling, go on a strict diet for like a week and walk through a food court. You'll experience this difference firsthand. Like, trust me on this. Oh my God, I've experienced this too many times. Now the key word here is weight. We're not talking about primarily fat loss, we're talking about just weight loss. Even though like doing a massive caloric deficit or in Takamura's case doing extreme, extreme fasting, that would lead to some fat loss like as a byproduct. What he's primarily focusing on and what most fighters focus on to make weight is just water loss. Like they lose water weight because water makes up 60% of the human body. So for example, if you ever start a fitness routine or you've noticed someone start a fitness routine, the if they stay consistent with 
with it and they're like eating healthy they're working out consistently they're doing all their jobs like uh, after about a couple weeks depending on the person they'll probably lose like you know 10 or 15 pounds or something like that and they'll be all excited like oh my god I lost so much weight in this amount of time I should have been doing this and stuff like that but during the first couple weeks when they're like adjusting and doing all this stuff the first couple pounds are always water like so when you ever see someone post to make a thing like and they've been like they just say after a couple weeks because losing pounds of fat like that fast requires um either help or you know newbie gains or like you know you're starving yourself in a certain way or you're doing various things or ice baths probably like it's gonna be a different thing for every single person because everybody is different and reacts differently but primarily if they just say like on average uh there's two weeks and they lost like 10 to 50 pounds it's this water weight and like you know if they're really happy about it don't be that dickhead and be like oh you know they just lost water weight or something like that because like that probably that little spark right there can give them the motivation to keep going like it's just a little nice thing to go like oh yeah congrats for you like you know just let them keep going i mean if they're a dick about it though just be like why does everyone always complain about losing 10 pounds i lost 10 pounds in two weeks this shit is easy then by all means shut that shit down but like if they aren't doing anything they ain't being rude by all means you just be polite so boxers and MMA fighters, usually a week or two out prior to their weigh-ins, will typically try to drop as much water weight as possible in a variety of ways, from cutting out carbohydrates and sodium as consuming those makes your body retain more water. Also making themselves sweat profusely. So that's why you usually see them wearing a lot of hoodies and sweatpants while doing their sports training, uh, going in saunas, and taking extremely hot baths. Anything to make them sweat profusely, as that will help them on the scale lose that water weight. But here's the danger of what Takamura was doing. While Hajime no Wipo is extremely realistic with its training and boxing drills, it does take it to those anime levels of hype danger. While Takamura was cutting to face Brian Hawk, he went beyond doing standard fasting, which is actually quite healthy once in a while and beneficial to the body for a lot of cellular processes, but I'll cover that in a later video and I'll go in depth on it. But for right now, I'll just talk about this. Not only did he not eat anything this time around, but he also did not drink anything for that amount of time. I need it. Now, while fighters do dehydrate themselves the day before, like only drinking a few sips every now and then, the day before just to weigh less before their weigh in, not drinking any water at all is massively counterproductive because water actually helps you lose weight. Like drinking a lot of water actually helps you lose a lot of water weight because what happens is the body, like I mentioned earlier, is made of 60% water. And when you just drink water constantly, you know, like, you know, one to two gallons a day, stuff like that, your body realizes, oh, I'm getting enough water. I don't need to retain as much water so you start losing it all under the skin and other areas and then that just helps you look a lot leaner during the summertime and other times as well and as a matter of fact a lot of your favorite actors actually do this too where they drink a lot of water throughout the week and then they like taper off drinking it and then the day before they just dehydrate themselves because when you're dehydrated and you got that like cellophane skin that makes you look extra ripped like hell look at what Hugh Jackman said you drink a lot of water a lot of water and then you stop about 36 hours before you shoot but but because you've drunk so much water, your body, you are peeing all That's the time. Half. But you That's lose like 10 point. pounds of all of this water weight. And I had my shirt off in that scene, so it's a key sort of moment physically. I had to be in peak condition for that. And I went on a water dehydration diet so that I could be as ripped and cut as possible for that. So for 24, 30 hours, you don't drink any liquids. So I had a massive headache. So Takamura not drinking any water the entire time while training his ass off, chewing on shiitake mushrooms to suck out his saliva, sitting in a hot room to sweat, and actively avoiding taking showers to avoid moisture locking into his skin or any food whatsoever, that's not gonna help you. That's just fucking dangerous. Now the average human being can go approximately three to four weeks without any food in their system before they starve to death because the body will start uh, attacking fat, then it'll go to attacking muscles, and then it'll go to like breaking down internal organs before you know you you die, you starve to death. And uh, if you don't have any water, because remember it makes up 60% of the entire body, then the time is way less. Like you can approximately go on average, the average person can go about three to four days without water in their system because that is such an integral integral part of living and without it like that is just a horrible death and and before those comments like well i haven't drank water in 17 years and i'm still fine you stupid bitch 
certain foods have water and I know you're probably drinking something which guess what so even for the highest caliber pro fighter this is just fucking dangerous if he was doing a water fast where he didn't eat anything but constantly drink water that'd be one thing or if he chugged gallons of water throughout the week and gradually tapered off it like real life fighters and actors do for you know shirtless scenes and they look extra ripped it could help him lose a colossal amount of weight for the weigh-in but this oh no 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 but in the end it all pays off for one of the best anime fights of all time and goddamn if you haven't watched Hajime no Ippo yet y'all need to fix that <sighs> but in the end would Takamura's starvation diet work in real life no Takamura's diet would not work for like 99.9999999969% of the population but hell there are always outliers out there but again I am not saying do this at all but if you had a coach and nutritionist guide you through how to properly do it the real life pro fighter way it could work out if you do it the pro fighter way where they have to lose like 30 pounds in like a week or something crazy like that it can still be extremely dangerous like it is dangerous i'm not gonna like try even front on that it is dangerous and i don't recommend anyone who is not a fighter trying to make weight to do it if you're trying to lose weight and fat the healthy way slow and steady is the best way you know just ask your girlfriend baby <laughs> uh, but so many people get into this mindset that they have to rush to get in shape and honestly that is not healthy or helpful at all in the long run like i said in my three leg stool of fitness videos focus on finding an eating plan that is healthy nutritious and doesn't sacrifice your taste buds so that you can stay consistent with it making results and keep it as a lifestyle instead of just like a oh i'm just gonna follow this till i get abs and then you know f myself up in the long run so don't do that. Eat healthy, kids. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video for today. And be sure to leave a comment down below. Tell me if you loved it. Tell me you hated it. And be sure to hit that subscribe button because I upload weekly. And be sure to hit that like button, too. That button like just helps me out a lot. It helps the video get noticed, too. So be sure to hit that like button. Also, leave it down below. Like, what is the craziest diet plan you ever followed that you're like, all right, I'm going to try this and try and get some result out of this diet? I'm generally curious. Like, leave some comments down below. Let's get a discussion going. Also, I want to thank you all so much for 300,000 subscribers like wow it's just I'm so honored and humbled thank you all so much all you guys and gals out there you're the reason I keep doing these videos I love doing them I love helping people I love seeing like the results like I've been getting a lot of testimonials too from like the various like books and stuff I made I'm like oh my god you're making some awesome gains bro I hope you like rock those this summer like any cause or anything like that but thank you all so much I probably have a 300,000 subscriber special like my 100k subscriber special but I'm not sure yet Yet. I'll see if I want to do something for that and um, yeah thank you all so much I'm truly honored oh and before I go let me say this again like if you want to get a nice strong body like Takamura like you want like an actual detailed program or Deku or anything like that then try out my all my aim to pass the American dream plan in real life program link down below in the description box like in the literal description box because like I made this program to help anyone like build muscle and burn fat and just look like a superhero and it comes with a meal plan it comes with like a whole training schedule what to follow and you know use like a 10-month program you can do or if you're just more into the calisthenics or you want to do you know some mighty guide stuff then I have this whole program called the mighty guide based off you know Mike guy and Mike uh, Rock Lee from Naruto that's just completely body weight no equipment needed and it'll help you build muscle burn fat at home literally from the comfort of your own room you don't need any equipment for this I made that like available like in the new year so definitely check that out in the link down below or if you feel like like you need motivation to be the hero of your story like you don't know if you can like have that motivation or discipline then I have a whole thing called a hero's will you can check that out also in the description box below but thank you all so much you make these so much fun to do and remember like I always say keep calm and booyah on and don't forget moment high later days actually I've been watching a lot of weekenders so I might just start saying later days like after keep calling booyah and don't forget moment high so y'all the first person to hear that so if you hear me say that in later videos you, like, you know what it's from it's from this freaking where to go where to go the show like Tino's mom in the show is great this show is great I had a, like I love lore in the show lore is my spirit animal and uh, yeah weekenders awesome I used to watch it all the time as a kid and I know I'm ranting right now and the video should have ended a while ago but whatever I just want to say that weekenders is great go watch it if you haven't uh, early 2000s kids, 90s kids for life. And uh, remember, like I always say, keep on moving on. Don't forget, moment I. Later days. Ugh.